It started a few months ago, around her birthday. Claire came home from work and was smelling like, well, Axe body spray. At first I brushed it off. You know, not my wife. She loves me. We've been faithful to each other for years. Then doubts start to creep in. I had to start working late shifts, the weekends too. As we'd been behind on our mortgage, my time at home has literally been less than five or six hours a day, and most of the time it was spent asleep. But she rarely complained. In fact, most of the time she seemed happier when I left. Then one day I tried to kiss her on her neck, and I saw a blemish there. You know, as if someone else's lips had touched her skin. My first mistake was confronting her, head on about it. Of course, she denied. She yelled. She called me a bad guy. It's a typical cheater behavior. Worst of all, she got what she wanted. Insisted I start sleeping downstairs and saying that we needed a separation, maybe even a, a divorce. All I got out of it was desperation, depression. She insisted that she was still faithful to me, but all the signs, all the signs were there. You know, I just didn't have the proof to back it up. Now, what you need is a security system for your home. My buddy Chad said one night when I went to drink away my troubles. Wouldn't she realize what I was getting it for? I pointed out. So don't tell her. Wait until she's out of the house. Uh, make it discreet, you know, cameras, uh, the smoke alarms, all shit like that, he said as he downed his whiskey. His half-brain scheme didn't sound that bad. I knew that Claire had said that she was going to spend the next few days at her mother's house to supposedly let things cool down between us. If I was going to get to the bottom of this, well, it was now or never. So that's what I did. As soon as I knew that she was gone, I contacted a local shop and I had them come that afternoon. The technician didn't ask any questions, just put them exactly where I said I wanted them. And even threw in one of those little doll cams as an extra bonus. I give it to Claire as a peace offering, saying that I was sorry for the accusations. That sounds stupid, I know. And what are the chances that she would even leave the doll around to let me listen in on her? But then, I know my wife. She's sweet, kind, and loving, sure. But she's also very predictable. She put the stuffed doll exactly where I thought she would. I let a few more days pass. Kept things amicable between us as I went to and from work, you know, and then the next time I was off and she again insisted that she didn't want to spend any time with me alone. I went to check the cameras. Finally, I could get the answers that I was looking for. You know, the, the grainy tape started up around 13 minutes past seven the previous night. It was about half an hour after I left for work, and I saw my wife sitting there on the bed, wearing nothing but a sheer robe, staring up at the ceiling. Now, at first, I was puzzled. I puzzled over what she might be doing. She was perfectly still. She had her back turned against the camera as she took off her robe, and I saw what looked like little marks on the edge of her shoulders. And then... Then I saw a man enter the picture, and I knew. I, I knew I was right. She placed him on the bed, ready to mount him, and I, I almost wanted to turn and run away, disgusted at what she was about to do. And then, to my amazement, I watched as those little bumps began to gently push her skin outward. At first, it wasn't noticeable, just a slow curling of her back, and then suddenly the movement quickened and long pieces of bone broke out at each side. They made a cracking noise as I heard my wife scream out. I, I, did, I don't know if it was a sound of pleasure or pain. The bones pushed back to the side and started to form sinew and stretch the skin to its limits, and I realized that they were forming what appeared to be wings. Her lean form bent over towards the man that she'd been seducing for the night, and I watched in abject terror as her mouth widened to reveal rows of sharp teeth, more than even a, a shark might have. 
Her lover's screams were now the ones that filled the void of the room. Blood spattered on our clean sheets. Muscle and skin ripped apart like wrapping paper. Her fingers gnarled into his open chest cavity like claws as she ripped out his beating heart and began to chew on it like a piece of jerky. Her wings spread wide and she lifted her meal from the bed, moving him to the floor right in front of the camera to finish him off. I don't know how long she continued to eat. I couldn't bear to watch any longer. And then I looked towards the room in confusion, trying to understand how it was possible for the video to correlate with my pristine room. I I never knew her to be a good cleaner, and sure, there had to be trace evidence of the bodies that she had likely disposed of time and time again. And then I heard a noise behind me and I turned to see her standing there. She saw what I was looking at, the footage, and, I, and I, I'm certain that if I could see my face, it was likely paler than a ghost. Without a word. Claire crossed the room, looked down at the doll, playing with the strings like a cat might a ball of yarn, and she crushed it slowly in her hand. It took less than a few seconds for her to reduce it to rubble. Moving to the bed, she crossed her legs and smiled at me, same way she had when we first started dating. So? What happens now? She asked. I found myself at a loss for words. And then finally, I went over toward her and smiled nervously, remembering the other cameras in the house, remembering she didn't know what all I had seen or, or if I had saved anything. I get everything in the divorce. Or I will, I will leak what I have all over the internet to every every priest, every demon hunter, and damn X Files junkie that there is. Is that clear? I said, with the best poker face I could muster. I I knew she could kill me in a heartbeat, but I also knew, if that was her goal, she would have done that years ago. She needed me. For what, I don't know. But all she did was nod. And kiss me. Slowly. It was fun while it lasted. Wasn't it? She asked as she got up from the bed. I never saw her again after that night. And I hope I never do. Oh, and one more thing. I don't think that I'm ever going to uninstall these cameras. Hey there, kids. It's me, Mr. Creepypasta. And I just want to make sure that all of you guys are still staying safe and doing your best to stay inside and keep yourself quarantined if you can do so. For those of you who can't, Really appreciate you guys doing what you, you know, have to do. So, all the best to all of you who are still working, and all the best to all of you who are forced to kind of stay home and are not able to work. If you guys are missing out on a lot of the conventions, which at this point, all of them that I was planning on going to this year, with the exception of San Japan, uh, looks like have been either canceled or pushed back. If you guys were looking forward to any of the conventions this year, and are missing out on a lot of the artwork from some of your favorite authors or artists, Take a look in the description down below. At least until the quarantine is over, you'll be able to find links to a bunch of my artist friends as well as authors uh, in the description of every video. And of course, I will be bringing you guys stories every single day from now until the end of time available here on YouTube as well as here on the podcast on Spotify, Apple, iTunes, and Google and wherever else you can get podcasts. And now a very special thank you Big thank you, the biggest thank you I can possibly give to all of you who support on patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta who help keep the lights on in my house. Patreons such as 
Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Ken Lendo Higuchi, Brianna Ventine Jensen, Chompinski, The Red Oak Shield Virus, Sandy Barney, G Weevil 3, Diana Kraus, Steven Van Huss, Tristan Pelton, Nico Cowell, The Ginger Bros, Dante Rao, Rafael Rodriguez, Last Blade Song, Eliminator 86, Nebsky, Steampunk Center, Caleb Dougal, Daniel Paulson, Sky Harbor, The Homeless Bird 93, Gabrielle Undefined, Barbie Carmen, Liam Newman, Aaron Stormcrow, Dr. Strawberry, Barbara Masio, Thomas Burgett, Azazel Rotten, Let's Get Scared, S-Man, Brandy Hasanori, and King DDD. Thank you guys so much for supporting on Patreon, as well as all of you that are shown in the description down below. And sweet dreams, everyone.